So our name is Carpinterias de São Lázaro Cultural Center, and as Inês already explained, uh, Carpinterias has to do with uh, the original function of the building in the middle of uh, Lisbon. It was an old carpenter's workshop uh, that began to function from 1928 on. Uh, it was very important for the several construction phases of Lisbon that grew a lot in the 30s, 50s, 60s and 70s. So all those wooden panels from doors, floors, windows, etc. probably were made in that carpenter's workshop in Lisbon. And when we tried to choose a name, we thought, why change the name? What's good? and has proven good, should be maintained. The only thing we did, we put an S of the plural, Carpinterias, instead of Carpinteria de São Lázaro, because we still are doing, creating, and uh, innovating, but uh, not with wooden objects, but cultural programs and projects. So that's the name and the story of the building. Uh, was, yeah, it was a, pump, yeah, the building uh, got deserted in the, in the end of the 20th century because with all Ikeas and Akis and Leroy Merlin, people didn't want to have tailor-made uh, doors anymore. They just bought them in the hardware store. So the carpenters got less and less work and it, the space got deserted and in the end uh, uh, there was a big fire that devastated the building and after some time the municipality thought that this building shouldn't be a ruin in the middle of the city but should have a, an important function for that part of the city so they um, put out a public contest, a public competition with the challenge to the people and organizations and associations to hand in and to present a cultural project for that space. Uh, our association handed a proposal in, in 2014, and we won that contest. So since then, we were attached to that building and our lives are not the same anymore. <laughs> and um, we started to plan and to begin everything in 2014 and finally we opened really we opened the doors in 2019 having done some programming before and now I think Fernando wants to say something. Well uh, I think it's also important to say that in 2017 um, in the middle of the construction work we had this uh, agreement with uh, with SIAC, uh, the Iberian uh, American uh, capital for culture. Lisbon was the, the city that hosted that event in 2017 and we had programmed two exhibitions uh, there. So we had to stop the work, uh, the construction work and we did this opening in the middle of the construction work. So we used this as an uh, excuse to do two exhibitions um, or three exhibitions. The exhibitions uh, itself with the, with the artists, Los Carpinteros, was the first one, a Cuban uh, duo, uh, which helped to create all this uh, communication uh, phenomenon with Los Carpinteros and Carpinterias de São Lázaro, which it was very good for us. It created uh, an immediate uh, awareness, and we had a lot of media interested in the project, and it was a way to prove that the, the space would be a culture project. This is a big uh, building in the middle of the old city. A lot of people wanted this uh, building, uh, from companies to commercial projects, and uh, the city hall stood for their plans, and they sticked with this idea of creating a cultural space. So it was really important at that phase to uh, show the city that it would be a cultural space. So in the end, after these two big exhibitions from uh, Los Carpinteros and then Alfred Jar also, we closed the door. It's, it was a huge success, those two um, exhibitions. We closed the space. We, in, 19, in uh, 2018, we finished the construction work and we opened in January this year. So it's still a very recent project. 
And, um, well, about program and audience. Um, our aim is uh, multidisciplinarity. I'm sorry. When you get to 50, you start to be dyslexic. <laughs> I can assure you that. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's essentially what we had to do was to create a cultural center. Normally, independent spaces uh, try to have a program more on visual arts or theater or dance or, or music. We didn't want to do it. We wanted to cross all these areas. So we had to create a cultural center. So when we look at the other cultural centers, they are very different from us, beginning with the funding. Um, we are completely private. Uh, we don't have any public funding. We don't have any private funding, but our own. So we have to create um, a way how to develop the, the project and find always uh, the way to finance it. Of course, we have the help from the city hall because they, they rebuilt the building after, after it was a ruin, uh, but only the walls. We had to create all the space inside. You can see it was made for us. It took some time. We had to try to have some partnerships and uh, in the end, we had this kind of a partnership, but uh, in the end, we all gather our money and we put it all also in the construction. After opening our doors, things started to be different because we, we knew that after opening our doors, things would be easier because we could show the space and the project would be a real thing. And so we tried in 2017 to have a, a positioning, um, not only through culture, uh, arts and uh, crossing those areas, but also with this idea of innovation and creativeness. Also as a space who attracts and who works with ideas that also help to a more sustainable society. So we, we created this, uh, this uh, positioning in 2017 and from then to now, we had all these new companies and big companies that were very attracted by the space, by our project, and they start to develop also some events with us regarding knowledgement and uh, innovation and creativity projects. So, in the end, we are a cultural center with a broad cultural program in different areas as fine arts, music, dance, theater, cinema, and gastronomy with the aim of crossing these areas and consequently bringing together audiences that normally move apart in their own circuits. This is something that we see everywhere, not only in Lisbon, but in several cities. People tend to go to the areas they feel attracted. Theater people go to theater to see theater. Dance people sometimes cross with theater, but normally they go to dance. Music, the same, which is classical, uh, erudite uh, um, music, or rock, or uh, electronic music. So our aim was to build something different, something that uh, we know that we could not on, not only do another space um, equal to other spaces in the city. We had to be complementary. So we knew that that was something that was not being done, to cross the areas, and consequently, this audience is too. So we worked that way, uh, mixing and creating simultaneous programs with several of these areas going on in the space from the beginning now in 2019. Also, together with these artistic areas, we have a program related to knowledge where innovation and creativity are the motto, also related to sustainability, and where we create an open field to connect with private and public companies and organizations that are cutting edge. For example, I can tell you two or three projects we did. One with Mercedes Mobility was an hackathon inside the space. Uh, there are some images that show as a working space and uh, working creative space. And also the e-waste summit, which was the first electronic waste summit to discuss how electronic garbage will be handled in the future. But also Archie Summit, which is a, a big event with lots of architects and debates and so on, talking about what architecture will be in the next uh, future. So 
All these new relations and dynamics created allow us to find new opportunities, but also new financial sustainability. That's being a way of have, from the beginning of the project, companies around us that are aim and they like to help us finance our project and also our cultural project. Well, this, is, this space is a fundamental piece for everything we do in it and around it. And as you can see in the images we have chosen, you see that the public is uh, broadly attracted to the space. And as Fernando told you, we have achieved something we are very fond of, like crossing the different audiences and being able to see people from cinema in art exhibitions and people from the fine arts in theater and dance uh, manifestations. So this is really something big because we always see them like very separate. And um, also, this is the, the, the reason why we left the space as open space as possible. We have two bigger floors, the auditorium and exhibition floor, that's the biggest one where most exhibitions happened, also in 2017. And then we have a downstairs floor that at the beginning we thought would be likely to host our offices and then we, and we, and we, and we understood that after all, it's a great space to do video shows and performances and dance presentations. So we also have our residency there, the artist residency we started last year uh, with a um, scholarship uh, by Gulbenkian Foundation. And um, we will have it again this year, but we want to talk about that later on. And um, for us, it's uh, very interesting to see how we have this maximum flexibility in the space because we left it as open as possible. And so we can adapt it to all the different contexts and projects that happen there. And it's really amazing, and this is also why we brought you all these images, as how this uh, space always changes dramatically and it always presents itself in a new and surprising way. So this is also something we hoped for and we're really glad we, we achieved that with, because you can work so much with lightning and the sound and uh, curtains and you create new spaces every time you do a new project. Uh, well, since uh, last January, we had a strong program with exhibitions, concerts, dance and performance presentations, workshops, debates, summits, and gastronomic events. For us, also, gastronomy, it's something that is a, a cultural product. Uh, and all, and I think everybody from southern countries know how important food is and uh, sitting around food and have all these moments together, but also in the north of Europe these last years. You can look at what Scandinavia have been done with lots of new ideas, with restaurants, gastronomy, events, and so on. So for us, all the mixing with all these areas, it's a very uh, interesting way of connecting people, of crossing people, and in the end, is a bit like uh, a best uh, communication would say. You have to find what really motivates people now and to create a link and create a space and a way to communicate so people are always looking for something in that space. Probably we don't have to have a program, a very strict program, with all the areas well defined and uh, with, a, with a schedule very organized. If we can create somehow uh, this ability of being attracted, uh, attractive to a, a, a different set of uh, audiences, people are always looking for uh, what you are doing in the space and the project. So it's a, another way and for me it's very nice because it's a flexible way of always creating new things. Of course it's more challenging because we have always to be creating something that is um, attractive and somehow not new and original. Sometimes we're able to do it but we're in a ready-made uh, society. But uh, in the end, it's a challenge, but it's a way of keeping interest 
uh, along the project, and not only this phenomenon of being something new, and then you start to be fading from the interest of people. Uh, another thing, it's important, and I will give Alda to Well, the, the issue we're talking about here with Adeste uh, is the public, and uh, this is also something very important for us. Uh, the crossing over of publics on the one hand, but also the position of Carpinterias in the city um, is very special. We are deep into a multicultural neighborhood uh, where a lot of people come from different communities and which we also want to address because we already noticed that the people that come from a cultural informed background, they all come to the center and have been visiting us. Now our next big challenge is to contact and connect with those people from those neighborhoods. They, they are, the city hall, they counted like over 110 different uh, cultural ethnicities and cultures in that space between Muraria, Martimnij and the uh, Clina Santana. So, but the most, the biggest communities probably are the Chinese, the Indian, the Pakistani, the Bangladeshi, and the uh, Brazilians. Then you have a lot of people from Africa, from Eastern Europe, and also from Western Europe, like the, the Portuguese themselves, of course, and a lot of new communities coming from France, Germany, etc. Um, so for us, what we see now as a big challenge is challenge is uh, mostly to interact with these communities that come from a more humble background, culturally and educationally speaking. And one of the first approaches we did to interact with these communities was in 2017, when our exhibition program was free. So nobody had to pay entrance fee, and that really triggered uh, the curiosity and the possibility of people just coming in and see what's happening. If they, if they didn't like it, they could go out again and they didn't have to pay for it. So it was also the possibility to open doors and tell the city, we exist, we're here, just come by and visit us. No, no risk. And um, now in, in, in 2019, our approach with these communities was firstly through gastronomy again. We had uh, chefs from the different communities invited to be part of our opening program. We had an African chef, an Indian chef, and a Chinese chef from the communities nearby, and they brought their, their food, and also a part of their community also came by to visit them, of course. And food is always a good approach to, to people that you don't know. You can always talk about food if you don't find anything else to talk about. And now... <laughs> <laughs> so now we have, and, and now in 2019, and after these eight months of uh, the opening from January until now, we thought it was the time to really look at these communities, and we found that uh, our next approach and a good approach would be to use the artist residency uh, that will start in October. The open call already happened. We already... Um, have a winner um, and we the challenge to the artists in the open call was please look at the communities that are in the neighborhood of this community of this contemporary art center and uh, and create a dialogue through art and artistic creation uh, with them bring them to the center and show them that this place is also their place and it was amazing we got a lot of very interesting proposals and um, well and the winners are it's it's a Russian art duo they already had a lot of inter you should, yeah you should. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> but it was very interesting because their approach is very hands-on and very community driven and this is what we wanted so we're very hopeful that this will be a good tool like a first step into the right direction, and it's happening, it will happen this year. So this is something we're looking very much forward to. Yeah. Last but not the least, only two ends. About sustainability, 
Uh, Carpinterias is an ongoing project. We opened our doors in January this year, and the next steps will be our own creation in the sense of intentionally crossing uh, all the disciplines with each other and the development of a, the infrastructure of the center. So we will have a, a shop also at the center and a rooftop with a restaurant and a bar and also artistic residency studios. All these new structures will strengthen our sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for hearing us out. <laughs> Thank you.